Hi, my name is Miss Christy. I'm a teaching artist in the PACE program, an art integration program with the Acadiana Center for the Arts with the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we're going to be talking about Andy Warhol and his work to help endangered species and to raise awareness so that people would understand that these animals are going extinct. And there were, at the time, only a few in the wild. And so he, with some friends of his, decided to create artwork that would promote the companies that were trying to protect these animals. So the, the project were, uh, com the complete project was 10 animals and those animals were the African elephant, the bald eagle, the black rhinoceros, the bighorn ram, the giant panda, Grevy's zebra, the orangutan, pine barren's tree frog, America's own San Francisco silver spot butterfly, and the Siberian tiger. After looking through all of these animals and finding out what is going on with them today in 2020, I discovered that orangutans are still very endangered. They live in Asian countries, Malaysia and Indonesia, and the, there are two areas where they live. They live in Borneo and Sumatra, and the Sumatra orangutan is the one that's the most endangered. So we're going to create a piece of artwork that in the end will be a poster for you to raise awareness about the endangered animal, the orangutan. So to get started, all you'll need are uh, your box of crayons and a regular white piece of paper. If you have construction paper, you can use that. We're just going to use a white piece of copy paper. And we're going to fold it so that you know where to draw the, your shapes and lines. So I am going to use all cool colors. Do you know what cool colors are? There's three of them. Can you guess what they are? If you think about colors that are cool, that might be associated with water. If you said blue, purple, and green, you're correct. Those are the three cool colors. So we'll mostly be using those, but you can use any colors you want to. You're gonna to wanna to think about light colors and dark colors. We're gonna be creating some highlights and shadows. The style of artwork that Andy Warhol created, what he was famous for was pop art. And he used bright colors. He used a technique called screen printing. We're not going to be screen printing today, we're going to just be drawing. And he did many, many drawings before deciding on the work that he ended up doing. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use a, just a regular blue crayon to start with, which is kind of a dark color. The first thing you're going to want to do with your paper is you're going to fold it in thirds. Do you know what that means? Thirds? That means when you divide something up into three sections. So there's different ways that you can do it. You can make an S with the piece of paper like this. You can fold it to where it looks like an S or a Z. Or you can just fold it over so that you only cover to where you can see the, this third and this third and it's folded over. So you'll fold it. This is also called a letter fold. This size will fit into a, um, a business envelope. So you can see that I'm going to fold the remaining amount. So you have a long rectangle. So once you get it folded in thirds, you can open it up and see there's three sections. One, two, three. So you're going to fold that up in thirds. 
and then fold it over again. And the reason we're doing this is we're creating a square. His, his work that he ended up with, they're very large pieces, but they're in a square shape. So this is going to help us create that square. So when you're done folding it in half again, you're going to have a small piece of paper that you're going to unfold all the way and you'll see those three sections you're going to tuck one of those sections in and turn it over to where you have four sections of your square so I already have one up here you can see that it's taped up you'll be probably working on a table but you can see that I've tucked in that bottom piece when you find the middle of your paper with your finger, this is going to be where it's folded and the folds meet in the middle. So we're going to trace your finger up just a little bit and on either side of your finger you're going to put a little dot. So that's two dots side by side on either side of your finger. Now you're going to draw a little ring around that circle on either side. You see that? And remember, if you need to pause at any time, please feel free to do so if you need to catch up. I'm going to keep going and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another circle around those circles. All right, and that's our orangutan's eyes. So now I want you to trace back down to the middle where the two folds meet and then trace your finger down just a little bit, not a lot, and that's where his little nose is going to be, his nose holes where he breathes. You see that? So it's just below the middle fold. So now come back up to the middle fold and you're going to draw a straight line across. Can you see that? It's a straight line from side to side. That's called a horizontal line. You're going to draw a short horizontal line. And then we're going to draw his beard. So the, watch me draw it first and then you draw it. Remember, it's fuzzy. He's got a fuzzy beard. So watch me draw a curved zigzag line. So I'm going to be going this direction toward the bottom, but I'm going to do a zigzag line as I do it. Almost like lightning. So when you get that part, then you're going to do the other side the same way. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to put a curved line down there at the bottom. This isn't his mouth. This is the bottom of his beard. So now I want you to find the middle again. Did you find it? We're going to trace our finger down past his nose, but not all the way to the bottom. And we're going to put a straight line side to side for his mouth. You can give him a little bit of a smile if you want to. Now we're going to give him a little bit of a bottom lip. It doesn't show a whole lot because he's so fuzzy, but you can see it just a little bit. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating his flange. So the, the boy orangutans, as they grow up, their faces become wider and wider and it's called a flange and that's what we're going to draw now. So I want you to find where his mouth is and you can see I'm going side to side. On the side of his beard right here or on the right or the left you're going to go around his whole face. So watch me do it and then you try. So I'm going to go up and around and then back down to where his mouth is on the other side. Did you do that? 
remember you can always pause and catch up and then press play. So now we're going to draw the top of his head. So what I want you to do, find that middle place again and you're going to go to the side of his head on either side, the right or the left, and you're going to go up and around to the top of the paper, and then you're going to come back down to the middle. You see that? So that's the top of his head. Now we're going to give him shoulders. So right here where this middle line is, you're going to start and you're just going to go a curved line down to the edge of the paper on the left and a curved line down to the edge of the paper on the right. Those are his shoulders. All right, so we've created most of the features. Now we're going to draw in some shadows. The way that you want to do this is you want to draw in the shape of the shadow and then color it in with a darker color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on the right side shoulder. I'm going to follow along the curve of his shoulder. I'm going to do a zigzag line towards his face. You can see he's a little bit fuzzy. And on the other side, the shadow is a little bit different. We're going to do the same zigzag line, but we're going to start on the outside of his shoulder on the left side of the paper, and we're just going to do a zigzag down to this side of that corner. We're going to do another little zigzag up to his face. So down here is where you're going to be coloring a dark color. And the dark color that I chose to color with first is indigo, my favorite color. And so I'm just going to go ahead and color in those dark spaces where the shadows are in his fur. So go ahead and find a dark color crayon. You're not going to color his beard yet, and you're not going to color his face yet. We're just coloring in these dark shadows. If you want to use black, you can. If you're using warm colors, you would use like a dark red. And you can color side to side or up and down. You just want to fill it in all the way. I want you to cover this entire piece of paper. I don't want there to be any more white of the paper unless you're going to use that as a highlight. All right, so I've colored in those two shadow areas. Now I'm going to choose a color for his flange. That's the area around his face that's not his eyes and not his beard. So the color that I chose to do that with is a light blue. It's a blue-green. So I'm going to go ahead and color his whole face, but not his beard and not his eyes. So you can see when I color, I like to trace around the lines that I already drew. All right, so you're starting to see where that fold is of the paper. And if you open it up, you can see the picture is going to stop right here. So with the color of his face, I want you to write orangutan right underneath him. Do you know how to spell orangutan? It's a little like the word orange. We start out with a big uppercase O and then an R, and then an A, N, G, and that's just like orange, but we're not going to use an E. We're going to put another A, and then a T, an A again, this word has, th this name has three A's. Do you know what orangutan means? So keep coloring your face. 
Does anybody know what orangutan means? Anybody? It means person of the forest. So in Malaysia, it's, it's a word that comes from Malaysia and it means person of the forest. So I'm going to write that down here. Person of the forest. What a beautiful name. So orangutans are generally friendly. The boys don't like to be around each other, but the, the girls take care of the babies and the babies stay with their mothers for a really long time. They're one of the only animals in the animal kingdom other than us that have their babies with them a long, long time. They can live as old as 60 years old in the wild but their habitat is being destroyed. So what's happening is these, these animals live in trees. They build soft nests in the trees. And what's happening is their trees are being cut down. So they're losing their habitat. All right. So I had, I've chosen that blue-green color for my, my flange, my face. And now I'm going to color, choose two colors to go with this to go on the top of his head. So in the paintings, you can see that there are shadows and highlights. And in those highlighted areas, I want you to use the color that you used for his face, his flange. So up here on the top of his head has just a little bit of that blue-green color. But then I'm going to come back with a different color, um, maybe a purple and a blue violet and an indigo, and I'm going to color those areas in a different color. So these are the shadows and highlights on the top of his head. Use that on his shoulder too. This is the blue violet. So see how I'm covering everything. I'm not leaving anything undone. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm looking at Andy Warhol's orangutan and there are some dark circles around his eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that dark blue that I had, that um, indigo, and I'm going to color in around his eyes. There's a little bit of a highlight there too. I'm going to leave the white of his eyes. Then I'm going to come in with a red violet. Now red is a warm color, but what happens when you add blue to it? Well, yes, it turns purple, but what if it's just a little bit of blue? Then it's a red violet. So I'm going to use that a little bit around his eyes. You do that too. Try to color with as many colors as possible. And don't feel like you only can have to color with one. You can actually color with several colors that over one on top of the other. I like to blend my colors. So now I'm using the original blue that I used to draw him in. And I'm coloring over the purple and the blue violet and the indigo with that. So he has some highlights on his shoulder. You can see that in all of Andy Warhol's prints. So I'm going to put in some of that red violet here. And I'll put in some over here on the tops of his shoulders. All right. 
Now around his nose, we're going to darken the holes of his nose, but then the way the style, this pop art style, Andy Warhol did this thing where you can see these lines that go around certain features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my dark blue to color in his nose, really dark. And then I'm going to circle around it just a little bit with that red violet. And the same thing with his mouth. I'm just going to trace it a little bit with the red violet. So oftentimes you'll see the when you see these prints that Andy Warhol made, they he left either the white of the paper or really bright highlight on the the mouth of in the beard of the orangutan. So right now, that's kind of the way that it looks. So the next step that I want you to do is I want you to find a black crayon and we're gonna color a little bit of that shadow that's underneath his chin. We're gonna get, make it just a little bit darker. It makes those shadows just a little deeper. So you can see how I'm layering the crayon. right under his chin. I'm also going to kind of trace his flange with the black crayon a little bit. Maybe give him some fuzz a little bit. And then I'm going to come back with my red violet and put in a little bit with the red violet. All right, so Andy Warhol did a lot of this work to raise awareness for these endangered species. He believed that it was up to us to protect them, and I agree with him. I think that we should protect them. We should protect their habitats, and we should make sure that they have a healthy environment to live in. So our, our orangutan is almost done. I want you to put in a background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another one of my cool colors, green, and I'm going to color in the background. So I'm using a, a regular green and then I'm coming back in with a yellow green. So that's a warm green. What makes it warm? Do you know? The yellow. If you add yellow to it, it makes it a warm green. All right. So, he's beautiful. I think that I could even make a little adjustment to his beard and maybe add a little bit of a bright color like yellow. This is actually a green yellow. So pop art was full of bright colors. It was an art movement that occurred in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. And you'll, if you look at pop art, you'll see a lot of bright colors, a lot of pattern. And so one of the things that Andy Warhol was trying to do with these animals, as well as the celebrities that he created artwork with, was to show their importance, to make them appear to be uh, something that we should protect or something that we should love and take good care of. So thank you so much for joining me for this art lesson. We will be posting a new lesson each day at 10 a.m. every weekday. Some lessons will be visual arts and some will be movement. 
If you are interested in supporting the arts in Lafayette, Louisiana, please go to the Acadiana Center for the Arts website and you will find all the information you need to contact us. If you'd like private lessons, I offer group lessons and individual lessons in art. You can reach me at lushceramics.com. I hope you had fun making art with me today and that you'll come back for the lessons after the Easter break. Remember to layer those colors. Don't be afraid to put your project aside and come back a little bit later and work on it some more. Layer those colors one on top of the other and your artwork will be beautiful every single time. I want to encourage you to go online and find out as much as you can about orangutans. They're fun, loving animals that it looks like they have a wonderful time playing. So keep playing and make lots of art.